Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It seemed like only a moment ago. And I had the invitation for those who would drop the box around them of three dimensions and allow something perhaps different than they expected. And the invitation is still here. For in these next moments, I wish to bring you an extension even of the lectures of today. Instructions from the other side of the veil in a loving way. Which we will then title the blueprint for the human being 2012 and beyond. So stay with me in these moments. Crying is not an authority. There is no proof in these words. There is nothing but love. An energy which cannot be denied by those who wish to feel it surging through the room. It is not a parent-child relationship I have with you. It is a brother-sister relationship equal in every way. You are a part of the Creator and so am I. You are doing the work. I am at your feet washing them in appreciation, in wonder. I am an informer of subtle energies that you may not be aware of. I am an advisor in love. I remain in service. This is the relationship you have with God. That part of you which vibrates higher and is your soul energy is called the higher self. It is higher self because it vibrates higher. It is multidimensional and you live in a three-dimensional reality. That means it separates itself from you until you wish to find it. And with pure intent and with your free will, you take the hand of your soul, which is eternal. That soul has been with you in every single lifetime. It's the same soul. It's a friend. It's you. It's the core you. And so many human beings walk through the earth without it wondering why they're confused, why they're always in drama, why they cry, why they have no friends and they feel so alone, when at the same time the angels stand outside their box of reality and the higher self sits within you, all wishing to touch you, all wishing to hold your hand, all wishing you would simply remove the box and give acknowledgement of God inside. Could it be that easy? When it comes to human belief, human emotions, and human thought, there's nothing easy about it. You've got to change the paradigm of your survival and start taking the power which is yours. The earth is shifting and you change all things depending upon how bright you hold your match. And this planet is in transition. The galactic alignment is upon you. And in just one year, you will reach the middle section of the 36 year alignment process. 17 years ago, it began. And that is why so much has shifted in that amount of time. As human beings begin to shift themselves, as human nature actually begin to move off of the peg of what it's always been. The major shifts of the planet have happened in the last 20 years. My partner has defined some of the things no one expected, the wild cards that took place to allow for you to sit in a planet that is not mired in radioactive result. And you are alive and your children are here. And they might not have been otherwise. And if you question this, just look at the quatrains of Nostradamus that did not happen. Look at the prophecies in your scriptures that did not happen. You sit in a time no one expected. (coughs) 
you're in a time fractal. That the minds, the minds themselves in their esoteric predictions told you could potentially result in the highest shift of human consciousness that you had ever seen. A shift in human nature. A shift that, that human beings would, would see finally that peace truly is the answer and not war. That conquering is something barbarians did. That modern society creates human beings who exist in unity. Now you'll have differences of opinion, there'll be arguments, maybe even skirmishes and unbalance. And that is the way variety works with humanity. But you're planting the seeds for peace on earth. Don't you feel it? I'm not talking about what's on your news, and even that is changing the geopolitical structure all around you, especially the Middle East. All setups. Or something grand, another wild card. We've talked about it before. See it for what it is. Don't fear it. What do you have in front of you that is so disturbing, you might say? Well, let us talk first of those who are esoteric and see spiritual things. They're bothered by all of it. They're bothered by the way you would talk as an esoterically minded person of what is happening, they'll say, God never shifts. You can't expect change like this. God is always the same forever. They would be those in a, an old paradigm who said, look, this is the way you're supposed to meditate. And it's never changed because God never changes. And this is what's acceptable in meditation and, and, and in prayer. And, and this is how long it takes. And this is what you have to do. And, it's never changed because God doesn't change and the argument sounds valid and you may ponder for a moment take a breath and say is there a really a new spiritual energy on the planet how can this be so I want to introduce you to a concept God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and always will be. The Creator is stable. The love of God permeates all things. It'll never move. It'll never change. It is always pure. But what has changed is you. <laughs> the human beings have started to vibrate differently, faster, higher. The relationship with the Creator has moved from where it was to where it is to where it's going. That has created many times a fast track. You can reach in and take your higher self and you don't have to meditate for 18 hours to get there. You can sit in a chair, give intent, and go to it. These are the new tools for the human being and their relationship to a Creator that never moves. Love of God has always been the same. Hand has always been out. Hand has always been out. And now the human being starts to shift and change. So what you're seeing is the human being changing, not God. The relationship between that which is on the other side of the veil and you is what is different today. You are starting to study and rediscover that which is in the first, that is the first society on the planet that had enlightenment, and that is Lemuria. And long before all of the others even had their star seeds implanted, Lemuria was there. You might say it was almost a test case, and it was there. And you're beginning to review it. Remember it, old soul, in your Akash. The seeds are being planted yet again here in this culture. Yet again by Lemurians, who are starting to see what you're doing. You might call them the parent star seed, benevolent, loving, beautiful, graduates, quantum. It's not a conspiracy any more than the love of God is a conspiracy. 
It's not about takeover. It's about revolution. Revelation. Revelation. And yet you're seeing so many things that disturb you. You're seeing the youth of earth. They're different than you were. You're not sure what they're into or why they're doing it. You understand their, their technology. You don't know where it's going. You see the weather shifts. And you don't understand the cycles that Gaia has gone through to get to this place. The very shifts that you see that you worry about that seem dangerous are here for you. The rejuvenations of the oceans through the implementation of a partial melting of the ice caps, the beginning of a mini ice age, so it comes into a situation that has, has ocean life rejuvenated the source of food for the earth, all for you. And you worry about it, because you've never seen it before. There's too much water where there never was before, and I told you that 22 years ago. I told you this is the potential, because of who you are and what you've done. Stand by for it, get ready for it. You worry about so many things that are upon you. You're seeing that change of consciousness of so much of the planet who is younger. What they're doing in other countries, the decisions they're starting to make is not what their parents taught them. You're seeing stable countries who've, who've had a certain kind of leadership for forever begin to change because of what the young people have decided they want. You've even looked as an American at your own country and said, what is it that's so different causing all of these troubles? Where our Congress cannot decide things when they need to. Where our financial institutions don't know what to do. We're in so much trouble, you say. And you don't get the concept yet. What it's like to prune a tree when it stands there all bushy and glorious. And, and then you cut off its branches, don't you? And they all f leaves all fall off. A certain kind of attitude it seems to be dead and dying and you, you cut off some more. And there it sits half the size it was and embarrassing to look at and the gardeners know the gardeners know what's going to happen next that after you prune the tree it comes back at twice the size it was and it takes a season or two but it returns do I have to say anything more are you understanding American. You're pruning the tree for the first time in your financial systems, perhaps even in your leadership, what's expected of those who represent you. It's all going to shift because of what you're doing. I'm going to give you some advice in a moment all about these things. You're starting to see unity, a unification effort where there never was one before. You're starting to see those things which bother you because you don't understand how oranges and apples can exist together. You're uncomfortable with change. And here you sit, afraid. So let us start the list of what the human being can do with the old soul to change this planet in transition. And it begins. Number one on the top is the most important one. And if you don't get this one and you can't get through it, you'll never get to number two or three or four. You just won't. Number one 
you're going to have to get out of here. We've given the instructions of how a human gets out of fear so many times. And yet you still cannot do it. You still want a list for it. There is no one. We've told you over and over to get into your core. To find a quiet moment and ask the question, Dear God, are you there? Is there part of me that allies with the Creator? Have I actually been alive in any way more than one time on the planet? Is it possible I've had consciousness for billions of years? Could I be part of God? If that's the case, dear spirit, can you give me a sign? That's when you get the chills because that is when the hand touches you and says, I thought you'd never ask. The process begins little by little, belief occurs. It took my partner four years. And the engineer in him was still the engineer, but he became the enhanced engineer. <laughs> One that found God inside. His 3D engineer touched the face of the cosmic engineer. And he was told that they will never let go. Once you take the hand of God, you can't get rid of it. <laughs> or you can, you can deny it exists. And then you'll go into denial. <laughs> and unbalance. You cannot change the love of God for you. And once you see it, you can't unknow it. There is no delete key in your brain. You can't unknow what you find out. You got to get out of fear. If you cannot get out of fear of these things that I have mentioned, you will sit there and wallow in uncertainty, drama, unbalance, indecision. And you'll age faster because of it. That's not what old souls are designed to do. Old souls are designed to go inside and pick up the wisdom of their knowledge of the many lifetimes. I don't mean a few, Lemurian. Some of you are over 30,000 years old. I'm looking at you. 30,000 years old. That's how long your lineage is. And yet the next thing, number two, is fear of Gaia. The first one is fear in general. The second one is fear of Gaia. You don't know what's going to happen, do you? What storm is going to get you? What earthquake or volcano is going to happen while you're there? <laughs> I want to tell you something. If you will have allowance to get out of fear, if you will find the core inside, your alliance with Gaia is absolute. You will have intuition to be in the right place at the right time. Did you hear that? And you won't be destroyed by what Gaia does. Because you have opted in with free choice to something every single human being has a chance for. The intuition to be in the right place at the right time based upon being in your core. If Gaia is allied with spirit and your consciousness, and it is, it means it knows what it's going to do and when. Be in the right place at the right time. It could be any clearer. And there are those who would say, well, it's not fair. You mean there are some of us who could know? It's not fair. That's not what I said. If you listened, I said all of you can know. And then there are those who would say, well, that doesn't make any sense. What would happen if everybody was in tune? <laughs> I'll tell you what would happen. You'd all get out of the way. That's what would happen. And you'd have peace on earth. How about that one? It's not a mystery what would happen. But we've also told you that less than one half of 1% of this planet has to strike the match for there to be enough light for all of you. Less than one half of 1% for all of you. 
That was number two. Number three, don't think like a human. It means you're going to have to start using those tools which don't work with logic. One of them is called intuition. Learn to trust first intuition. Have a life that's ruled by first intuition. And expect what we would call synchronicity. Defined as that which happens seemingly by accident, without a plan, or you have no clue how. And you depend on it. That's a quantum thinker. There's no roadmap for it, and I can't make you a list. When you get into the core, that place where you are comfortable with yourself and you feel the love of yourself as a piece of God, do you love God? Then you have to love yourself for your part of it. You have to. When you get to that place where you're comfortable, no matter what spins around you, and you can say it as well with my soul, all manner of things happen. Intuition becomes king. You don't look for a 3D roadmap anymore, and no one around you will understand it. They'll say you're strange, you know. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. How can you live that way? And you'll swell up and smile and say, you don't know it yet. But it's the only way to live. I have joy in my heart. Do you? You can say that to them. When the Israelis marched for 40 years in the desert, they were given enough food for one day. Pretty soon they got used to it. They didn't worry about tomorrow. Because every single day their needs were met. Every single day. Seemingly miraculous, all it wasn't. There's science behind it, of course. The master scientist is the creator. <laughs> but they got used to it. Can you? What if your map only extends till you go to sleep? And tomorrow you get a new map. Are you all right with that? You can't think like a human. Who wants to have it all figured out for life? <laughs> Which direction am I going? What am I going to do when I get there? And what happens when I die? Is there going to be somebody to bury me? You have to know it all, don't you? What if I told you there is no time? Not really. If you could take the circle of time and shrink it so it was the size of a molecule, you're in the now, and you stand in it, and on it, and with it. And that's what we see. It's not straight, doesn't go one speed. You can't think like a human. So get out of fear. Participate with Gaia. Look at what your ancestors did, even in this area. I said it before. First thing they did when they got up in the morning, honoring the north, the south, the east, the west, gifts. An alliance with Gaia. And they knew. Don't lose that. Here it comes again. You got to have it. It's part of what you're going to do as part of that blueprint in 2012. The next one shine your light for yourself. This is way out of 3D. For here's what you're taught. Once you find something that works, you got to share it. If it's spiritual, your job is to go and glean other human beings so they can have the same thing. Evangelize it. Bring in others. And all together you'll sing a song. <laughs> and now I'm going to give you just the opposite. For dear ones, this is a paradigm we've discussed over and over before. When you light your match, when you get into the core, when you discover that which is inside and realize who you are, make it shine through you. Don't share it unless somebody asks. Did you hear that? Don't share it unless someone asks. If you shine your light bright enough, everyone around you will benefit. 
And I don't mean they're going to go out and get a crayon book. I mean they're going to benefit by the love of God that shines through you. And they'll know you're different. And some will come and go in your life and ben be benefited by your, your benevolence and your attitude and how you act and what you think. And they may ask you and they may not, but when they leave your presence, they will have been touched. It never goes away. There are certain energies on this planet that are forever and the love of God is one of them. Did you hear that? in a multi-dimensional way as you take on the mantle of the Creator and the wisdom inside of the old soul you shine a light that the earth can never extinguish and on your passing from this place the match stays lit and goes into the crystalline grid it affects the vibratory rate of the planet it never gets extinguished ever ever this is what you knew before you came in. Permanent change of the planet. The 36 year window is here. The 26,000 year cycle is here. Shine your light for yourself. Work on yourself. Get out of drama. Get out of worry. Your family. You don't have to evangelize what you believe. If you shine bright enough, your family will be so happy. <laughs> that you're not like you used to be. <laughs> Maybe some of them will actually mention it. We don't know what you're into. We may not, but don't even tell us, but we sure like who you become. <laughs> Does that resonate? And the more you shine your light, the more others will want what you have. No more worry. Do you know how it feels, human being, to walk as a human being and not be in judgment? And I mean not be in judgment. That you can, you can be a political activist and believe in your party, and when you hear the other's position, you listen in love. Can you, can you even imagine it? <laughs> not judgmental not in hate you can have a difference of opinion and love the other person as a creature of God just like you it's beautiful beautiful can you do that shine your light for you that is the concept that is and will remain the paradigm because less than one half of one percent of you have to do it. The metaphor given early is the lighthouse. It still is. One lighthouse on the barren rock, seemingly in the same dangerous territory everybody else is, but the light shines to reveal the danger of the rocks and the others steer around it. And I say it to you again, they don't necessarily have to have dinner with a lighthouse keeper to be able to see the light. Thousands are affected and you never meet them. And that's you. And you don't even know it. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. Shine your light. And then finally, you have a change of consciousness where I want you to expect good things in your life. Critical critical because when you start to touch your core and you get into that place which is awareness of the Creator your consciousness is the most creative part of the planet human consciousness in that attribute is powerful if you're a hypochondriac going to catch every disease you can imagine. You will create it and then it'll come. Are you getting the point what you think you will create? Do you have any habits? 
that you would like to change, what you think and how you speak of yourself, or what you say out loud that you would expect. Oh, I knew that would happen. Well, it will. Mm -hmm. And quickly, because you become a master creator. Watch what you think. Expect good things and they will come to you. Expect synchronicity and it will come to you. Expect to live longer and you will. You are sending a message to your cellular structure. And it will agree with you and perform the task. These are the elements I wish to present today. And there's only a few of them. And they're all hard. They're all hard. And then finally, if you dare, if you dare, I'll say it again. Can you fall in love with yourself? And I don't mean in an egotistical way. And I'll say it again. If you can love God, and God is in you. Why can't you love that part of you? And you got to practice it, human being. For it's not what you were told. You're not born spiritually dirty. You're born spiritually magnificent. And you don't remember it. But when you were fresh from the other side of the veil, you knew who you were. You wanted to know where the music went. That's the first thing the child wants to know. If the music stops, the child cries. Right out of the womb. When the music stops, the cry, crying begins. It's so comforting to hear that, which is the light of God wherever you are, playing a constant tune. It soothes your soul that you know you're part of the whole. Oh, I can't describe it. I hear it now because I am on the other side of the veil. I cannot imagine being without it. I love you so much. For what you do to imagine walking without the music. How do you do that? Fall in love with yourself, I dare you. Look in the mirror. Look in your eyes and say the words, I love the God in me. And the more of God in me there is, the more I will love what I see. Fall in love with the planet. Look at the creations that are in front of you. The beauty of the grass, the trees, the flowers, the animals that all yell to you about unity. Planet works in unity, and you're just finding out about it. Blessed is the hum human being who understands this message from beginning to end, who perhaps wishes to study it again from beginning to end, to look for the subtleties in there that I've just given you and not spoken, for the energy which is being delivered even to the listener who is not here, even to the reader who you think is reading it later. To them, they're reading it now. And I'm speaking it now for them, too. You're all involved, old soul. It's why you're here. It's why you came back. It's why you were birthed by those who knew who you might become. And we've spoken of it before. God bless those who don't believe in anything that you represent, who may even be your parents alive or dead for when they were on the other side of the veil they knew of the potential of your life old soul and what you might do here in these years you have it makes them light workers too the system is beautiful beyond what you can imagine beyond anything in 3D a consciousness which is now aware and benevolent you're planting the seeds that we thought you would 20 years ago keep going light the match fall in love I am a crying lover of humanity and so it is